So, okay, so what you see is, you see these things are marked, right? So names and, and, and um, you'll see over here as well, like aliases, hashtags, anything that it can actually detect um, that gets marked in that way. Now that detection happens locally, so it's not being sent anywhere, so you don't need to worry about that. Right. Um, and it detects a whole lot of different things, and then it shows you that marking. Um, well, let's go back here. When, when that marking is there, you can mouse to the dot, to that little blue dot on the side, and then you'll get a, a menu coming down. This is for links, the one on the left is for links. So all of these things are links. And again, these links that shows up here are now for a name, and it is the same if you set a name here. Uh, let's just put in a name, Jake, Jake's White. Let's say Jake's White, gets detected as a name. Um, and over here, you'll see these ones with the checkboxes are the ones that you see over there that shows up over there. So maybe we want to take, I don't know, search systems, we want to take that off. So now when we go here and we go to names, you won't see search systems in this list. You'll see open corporates and Twitter and those kind of things. And so that's how you can determine which of the links are, uh, are shown. And obviously when you click on the link, then that will, that will just go and it will open up in a new, in a new tab, right? Um, so that, the first thing is the links. The second thing is the widgets. So these are these correspond now again to to these things over here. So you'll see dhash, risk IQ, who's who's XML API. We have all of these um, enabled here. So you'll see three of them. You should see three of them when you're over here. And you go to this. Uh, I see this actually another one. I'm not entirely sure why that is. So it's clearly a bug. Um, if you just want to send this name to the tool, you can click over there and then obviously it's going to just open it up with that. And so now you can run things and whatever you want to do over there. Um, this does the highlight. We're going, to, we're going to look into that just now. And over here that just copies it to, to the clipboard, right? And it kind of remembers where you, what menu you had open so that it would show that when you go on it again. Again, here, um, that's now for hashtags. These are things that you can see on hashtags. That's for aliases. Um, and, and so now, let's say you say, well, actually, I don't want to do like this. It's nice and whatever, but um, it, it didn't detect specific something specific. So um, let's say in this case, we wanted to look at, uh, I don't know, the word sense post. So you can still highlight it like this. And then you'll get this menu in the and you get the same menu in this case the tool is asking you do you want to treat this as text as a name as a hashtag or an alias it wouldn't say email address because clearly it's not an email address and so you can say okay well i want to treat it as as text or i want to let's say i want to treat it as name and then you get you know then you get that menu again from there which was the same menu that when you were over here that showed up um as an as a name right see those that thing is now the same, right? So you can mark it like this and you can be like, okay, treat it as a, treat it as a hashtag and uh, look it up on Instagram. And you know, it would do, and it would do that thing over there. All right, so you don't, so if it doesn't get marked with this thing, you can still do it by hand. Um, right. Mm, the other thing I wanted to show you quickly is like what's happening with the images. Like images above a certain size will get this will get this eye. When you mouse over the image, you'll get this eye. And when you mouse over the eye, you get like your reverse image search, um, photo forensic, photo forensics, and exif processing. And this exif processing is ours. So this is something that we build ourselves, um, which I think works pretty well. And you can see, you know, the image and all the exif and uh, you know what's going on there, right? Um, uh, and reverse, I mean reverse just works the way that it works in reverse, right? That's um, pretty simple. Okay, you can see they it actually picked it up on, on Twitter, with Dima, all of those things, that's pretty nice, right? Um, okay, and then, so, and, that, and that appears on every image that you see um, 
uh, above a certain size. Obviously, it's not going to show up for things like these videos, right? But like this should show up there. There you see, there it is. Um, there it is like that. And, and if it is like a picture, let's say this tiny little picture that's over here and you want to send this and this is not picked up to have an eye in the middle, you can always still right click on it and you get the same, you get the same, uh, the same functionality in this context menu. So you can still send this off to say, okay, I want to send off this tiny little picture of Donald Trump off to the exit tool for that. Um, it's just like, it doesn't make sense to put a little eye in there. It's too small. Um, you'll also see that you have this nugget thing, as we call it, the nugget, that's on the um, on the thing over there, right? And this allows you to do pretty cool things. You can treat the page that you're on, you can look at either the, the page as the full URL or the website. And the full URL in this case would be like wotimo.com slash about. The website would be Vortimo dot com and the domain would be votimo.com obviously if we were on a site called uh, uh, you know www1 dot i don't know votimo.com then www1 dot votimo.com would be the website um, and the domain is votimo.com and so when you on let's say on a site like this and you want to be like oh this domain looks actually pretty interesting then you can always just click on this thing and go to the domain and be like on the wayback machine or you know, show me anything that was on here on the Wayback Machine. Or let's look at build with, and on build with, look at relationships between this and other sites. So you can see here, um, that's quite interesting, right? Uh, you can see the relationships that it has with other sites. Um, or you could be like, okay, well, actually for this website, actually let's, let's read the URL and the URL, let's, let's look on the Wayback Machine on this URL. So now it would look at votimo.com slash about and it would look for different um, versions of the site. And then maybe we can pick up one of the older versions that we've had. And obviously, you know, this works wherever, uh, wherever you are. I know there was an older picture here, which I hope we can still get. And somehow the picture doesn't show, but when you do the processing on it, uh, when you do EXIF on it, you do get uh, you do get the old picture. I don't know why it doesn't show you. There's something with archive URL. And in this, there's a whole lot of nice um, EXIF information. Like you can see, it was taken with this body serial number. It was like a a, a thing, and it was a X one hundred V Fujifilm. Da 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 da. All of that. Like that's, that's pretty good stuff, but, but so you can treat the site thus as um, either the domain, the website, you know, for analyzing the website or the URL, when you want to get link info, or you want to quickly see if there's an old version of the specific page um, available on the Wayback Machine, you can do it by there. And again, these actions that you see here corresponds to the actions that is here when you go to URL. Uh, you see, these are the links that we have for URLs. So get link info Wayback Machine. Um, that's for the URL. If I put in, for instance, if I say Google, well, let's just see if we go to domain. Let's go to domain. And then you see this Google site thing I put in quite recently. So now when I go to, let's say I go to this, I'll, I'll, I can say, okay, actually look this up and you just got to press enter and then you know you can see uh, it does a search for site colon document all right so that, that those are the actions that you have um those are the actions that you have on the nugget over here right now in some cases you might say well this marking of the of of um, objects is not something i want to see all the time um so you can you can actually switch all those things off so if you go to decorations here's all the different things that happen right um we can switch off object extraction text highlighting image enrichment highlight menus all of these things we can actually switch off right um switch on and off now i, I think it's useful to look at highlighting now real quick and how highlighting works and highlighting is super super simple you go to this thing that says highlight 
and it gives you basically four kinds of boxes where you can put stuff in. So if I put in, let's say the word sense post over here, I think you've seen this sense post. I don't know if it was in a small p. Let's put in Ortima over here and let's put in Ortima over there. Right. And now when I go to this page, you would have those things underlined in that way. Right. And this is kind of useful when you need to quickly see if something is on a page or not. Um, it does it in the order from the top to the bottom as well. And you can switch those things on and off um, as you see fit. Like, so you could be like, well, actually, I don't want to see all the yellow ones or I don't want to see this. And it kind of allows you to keep track of where things are. As in, you put in the text in these boxes over there, and then you see that text on the web page, but also the other way around. So what you can do is you can say, let's say South Africa is interesting to me. You can highlight South Africa. And then when you go to this tag button over there, you can actually say, put it in, I don't know, put it in the, uh, in the uh, green, green box, right? And so now it will be green underlined, but you will also see it over here as South Africa being in there as well, right? And then you can say, well, I'm going to disable that. So none of that stuff will show up again. So you can decide if you want to do it. And you can take it, you can set, you can, and you can send it back as, as well. So you can say, actually, um, take it out of the green box. And then obviously it gets removed over there. And so those are kind of like tags that you can add to it. And you can change the color. And obviously you can also do things like you can say, you can use it to redact stuff. So in this case, um, let's make it, uh, well, let's say we don't want to ever see the word Wortima, right? So I'm going to take Wortima out of the uh, yellow box over there. I'm going to put it in the black box over there. Um, and you can see this is now set to highlight with the alpha that's, you know, fully uh, on. And so now it's basically redacting that, right? And if we go on Twitter and let's say we look at the profile over here, you'll see what too much tech is still, the tech part is still in there, but we can just say, okay, actually tag that, put it in the black box and add it in. And now that will get redacted as well, right? So um, that's the way you can, you can basically go from entering the things in this page and then it will highlight it on that side, but you can also go the other way around and you can on, on any of the things that you highlight or any of the things that get the menu, you can um, also, you can also say, put it in this box and then it is. And that's super useful if you like, oh, you quickly got to see, cause here, for instance, here, I mentioned the multi -go, And so now that's, you can immediately see, okay, this is something that is interesting. And as we, and as we uh, uh, highlight this stuff, we actually also have, um, uh, we, we put this blue dot in there as well. So now you can actually say, well, I want to treat that as, as a hashtag or I want to treat it as an alias and then do whatever it is that you do on there, right? But if that irritates you and you just want to see the highlighting, you can go to config and you can say, actually in the decorations, um, this highlight menu, we, we don't like to see that highlight menu. And so now there's no, there's none of those things there. It will just plain, you know, make it a, a red underline. And that's what it does, right? Um, we can also say, actually, we don't want to see any of the text highlighting. So that goes away, right? And so now, you know, the, the blackout is not there anymore. And Multigo is a, a, a red underline. There's no more of that highlighting. And we can even say, like, we don't want to see this menu over there. So we could be like, oh, actually set the menus, the object extraction, take that off. And now the only thing that you have is the, is the thing on the images, right? So you could literally, you know, switch it on and off just the way that you want to, that you want to do that. Right. And I think that's super useful when you want to put in some certain things about a case, put it in there, make sure that you don't miss it when you're on the page itself. And the rest of the stuff here, uh, is, uh, is, is kind of straightforward.